question about evil and uh, its relationship to uh, personality. Uh, yes. Evil, it seems to me, comes in varying degrees. Some people are profoundly evil, some people such it's a little bit evil. But um, it, 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 it's my impression that there are some people who are, it's part of their personality, you know, they're, they're born that way. Uh, yep. And there may be some people who have become so damaged and um, twisted by what's happened to them uh, that can foster evil. So is there a distinction between those two? Is some of the personality inherently inherent in the personality? Yep. Or, uh, well, remember I said that God created personality. Yeah. So therefore, there is nothing evil in our personality. Yeah. But I will explain to you why this appear there seems to be this appearance of evil right from birth onwards. What actually happens is, remember incarnation, you've got the soul and you've got the bodies that are created at conception, right? So you've got the two bodies, the physical and spirit body, material body and the spirit body, and there's the half of the soul that incarnates. Now, what is happening in an energetic way is the soul envelops the two bodies. So in other words, the soul controls the physiological functions and the material functions and the spiritual functions of those bodies. Is this the whole soul or half the soul? The half of the soul I'm talking now. So when I'm referring to the word soul, I'm talking the half of the soul at this point, right? The half of the soul needs these bodies to begin this experience that we talked about earlier, which is this experience of slowly absorbing life, slowly experiencing. But the problem is that this particular creation is in an environment already, at the moment of conception. So at the moment of conception, shortly after, this soul surrounds this body, if you like, but inside the mother's womb. Do you follow me? Now what's happening inside the mother's womb is, here's the mother's womb, you could say, this is now the mother's womb. What influences are happening upon the mother? She's got, you know, her relationship with her husband. So her husband, her husband or man in her life is there. She's got her own emotional injuries, the mother's emotional injuries, right? The ones that she hasn't cleared by the time she had this child. She's living in an environment of some kind, isn't she? Yeah. And there is also other environmental factors impressed emotionally upon the child. So, you know, even just a woman being pregnant sitting in this room will be absorbing the child, un the unborn child is absorbing through its mother all of your emotional impressions. Mm -hmm. This is occurring right from the moment of conception. So by the time that child's born, yes, it has quite a lot of emotional damage. Mm -hmm. So watching horror movies, for example, while you're pregnant is not good? Well, uh, you know, like doctors would say drinking coffee while you're pregnant is not good. Yes. I'm saying to you, anything that you do that emotionally affects you and causes you to get in a fear-based state is certainly going to be more damaging to the child than even drinking coffee. Right? Because it's, see, these are all emotions that this soul is absorbing. Now, you imagine, by the time this soul is born, already it's now acting out the emotional injuries that it's received. Already. That's why most children are born screaming, right? Yeah. So it's all avoidable, isn't it? It's all avoidable. Uh, uh, well, Whole lot's avoidable. You know, if the husband dealt with his crap, <laughs> the wife dealt with her crap. But, it, but in a sense, it's not, not avoidable. Well, no, it is, it is all totally avoidable. The whole lot is totally but avoidable. But it doesn't happen that way, does it? It doesn't happen because very few of us are making the personal emotional choice to deal with all of our own emotional damage. That's why... So that's going to be ongoing. Um, it doesn't have to be. Within, like on the divine path, within a few years, you can have dealt with all of your emotional damage. Mm -hmm. But I mean, in a broader sense, that in society, it's going to happen. Well, let me like, explain what like else is this, going on. And then it's up to the individual to progress. True, but let me explain what else is going on. The husband and the wife, or the two creators of this child, form a protective spiritual umbrella around this unborn child. So what that does, what that means is, if the husband and wife, or you know, the, the partners of this child, the creators of this child, are in very good emotional and spiritual conditions, 
nothing can penetrate this emotional umbrella to harm the child from the external environment. Does that make sense? Mm. So really, it just depends upon the parents themselves being able to form this umbrella. But what often happens is, let's say the mother is really angry with men. So let's say the mum here, she's angry with men. Let's say this is a boy child. What's going to happen from the moment they can see? This boy child is going to feel mum's angry with me before I even am born. Can you see that? And it, it starts to, what, how, do, how do you respond when someone's angry with you unjustly? Smack them. You feel like, <laughs> you feel like getting angry back, do you not? <laughs> so a lot of boys finish up doing one of two different things. They either get angry back or they go down the track of feeling browbeaten by their mothers and do whatever she wants in order to get her love. They'll do one of those two things. But that injury is already there before they're even born. Now if the mother dealt with her anger, right, and now she was in a state of love towards her child, right, completely, what's this boy going to feel about women? Love. Just love, right? So it's going to be a totally different experience for that child, isn't it? 